Okay, we're going to tie the bird's nest. This is a pattern developed by a guy named Cal Bird. <clears throat> good nymph pattern, good emerger pattern. Uh, tied weighted, it's tumbled along the bottom, which is why the legs are tied in in a full round or 360 degree format. Uh, often when it's tied in the surface film, they just put legs on the side and they don't put a regular tail in. They use Antron yarn as a trailing shuck. Uh, if you're going to do it in the surface as a catter's pattern. So you go ahead and start your thread on the uh, hook, trim your tag off, and uh, get yourself some copper wire we're going to use for the rib. This is a fine copper wire here. Cut myself a length of it and bring it in and attach it to the uh, underside of the hook by just capturing the thread with with a wrap over technique. So I'm just going to wrap over it, make a couple wraps, and now I can just pull and slide the end in so I don't have to trim it. And then keep right on wrapping and you notice I'm holding the wire down so that it gets trapped underneath the shank. And I want this rib to come off the bottom. It makes it easier to wrap later. Uh, I don't have to worry about knocking my tail out of alignment, uh, or at least don't have to worry as much about knocking the tail out of alignment if I tie the rib in on the bottom. And the tail is just this uh, wood duck flank. This is actually mallard dyed uh, to look like wood duck. And I've torn a few fibers off here and I'm just going to size them according to the gap of the hook and, and uh, one to one and a half times the gap is a, a good length for this. I'll go in here and cut these butt fibers off because they're longer than I need. Use a pinch to trap that right on top of the hook. And I use the turn and look technique to look down and see that my pinch was working. And now I've, I've rolled it to the side so I can see that when I wrap back to the right end point. And I'm going to take that wire and pull it down a little bit and make a wrap under the tail fibers and pull up on them. It just helps flare them a little bit and helps keep them up and keep them moving and bouncy as opposed to letting them get trapped and, and cupped down over the back. Having done that, I uh, I just need to start my dubbing. And uh, I use a possum, that's what they, they call for in this is possum. And uh, you can get it bleached or you can get it natural like this. Uh, one of my favorite colors to tie it in is kind of a reddish brown, which is natural possum dyed orange and it comes out this reddish brown color and it's what uh, Francis Bettish uses that color right there is what he uses in his Ossible Wolf um, actually bought that dubbing that I showed you right there from his fly shop I ordered a whole pound of the stuff uh, but anyway this is the natural dub and that's what we're going to tie it with and uh, you, you just use a little bit of dubbing and I'm using the offhand dubbing technique where I'm dubbing with my left hand and my my dubbing is being held in my right hand that way if I need some more as I'm going along on the fly, it's right there in my right hand ready to, to do or to use. And uh, dubbing with the left hand is a good thing if you're right-handed. It's a good thing to get used to doing. It does save you a lot of time and effort. Now, having dubbed that on, I've left some bare thread that I'm going to use up wrapping to the rear. And now see my dubbing is just starting to wrap around the hook and I'm right at the rear of the body. So I start wrapping forward. And uh, this is tied, sometimes it's tied with a very skinny body, one layer of, uh, of dubbing like this. And then uh, you'd put the leg wraps on. Or just to show how uh, a, a good tapered body is done, I'm going to go ahead and put some extra material on here. But it, actually, uh, normally I tie these quite thin and I would, I would stop with what I've got here and put my legs on. But I'm going to put some extra dubbing on and wrap back over this to build a taper. Now if you're going to build a taper on a fly what you do is start wrapping backwards and you just don't wrap, wrap all the way back to your starting point. Instead you stop and then and then reverse and go back towards the eye again. Then by half, wrapping halfway back to my original starting point or halfway back to the bend and then putting some more material on and wrapping forward I, uh, I build this nice taper. Uh, and uh, whether you want them skinnier or, or uh, or fat like this is kind of a personal preference thing and one of the reasons you tie your own flies. Now I'm going to wrap this in reverse, this rib material, and that's why I made those few extra wraps of thread before I started wrapping this rib in reverse because those extra wraps of thread I had made up there are going to just unwrap while I'm wrapping this uh, ribbing on 
and you see my thread is waiting for me when I get to this point I can just pass my thread up behind the wire make a wrap in, or two in front come around and back again and then make a wrap or two in front and I know that wire is nice and secure and I'm going to cheat instead of uh, twisting this off I'm just going to reach in here and cut it and you notice I used the apex of my scissors I went way down in I don't ever cut with the tips if I'm cutting even soft wire like copper now we what we got to do here is is put some uh, legs on this, and we use a full 360 degree distribution of uh, legs. We want them to go all the way around the hook. So I've got a clump here that's about the width of the uh, gap. You can see it's much longer than I need, and uh, I'm going to place it here so that the the tips are just about even with the bend. And I'm just going to make kind of a soft wrap around this. I just folded it down over the hook shank. And I made that soft wrap, and now I'm just going to make a tightening wrap and another one here. And you can see it pulls the material around the hook a little bit. And my having folded it down tent-like and then do doing this wrap, uh, you know, just distributes this. And it's what they call a 360-degree distribution wrap. And it's probably the easiest and quickest way to put on some legs. Having, having done that and having them spread all around like that and you can see the the barring and marking on these mallard feathers it is very good and uh, there you go that's kind of the way you want the legs to be and you want the length to be just to the bend maybe a little longer but not longer than the tail but having put that on we're going to take it off and I'll show you another way to do a distribution wrap and the other way is actually just uh, just doing a regular collar wrap get all that stuff out of there and what I'm going to use here is a partridge feather now I've stripped all the fluff off the bottom and I'm going to prepare it by holding the tip and stroking the fibers back that establishes where my tie-in point for the feather is going to be and you can see uh, what I've got for a width there of uh, material and check my length to make sure it's going to go back to the bend but not beyond the end of the tail and now I've turned this over so the concave side is facing me and I'm going to cut the end of that off and then trim these extra fibers off so they're fairly close and then tie this in with these the concave sticking to the rear because that's the natural curve of the feather that so they just want to roll to the back then and that's what I want them to do so why not take advantage of the, sh the natural concave shape of the feather so I'm going to roll this over so I can grab my hackle pliers which I can't find so I got a long enough stem here and I seem to have misplaced my hackle pliers so I'll just hold the stem in my fingers and I'm using the, what they call the fold and wrap technique and you notice as, as I'm wrapping this, I just keep coming in with my thumb or my forefinger and pulling those fibers to the rear. And I'm just kind of folding them as I go, as opposed to trying to pre-fold the feather. I just stroke and wrap a little bit and stroke and wrap a little bit and, and get them to lay back. Now I'm going to take my thread and come up behind the quill, work my way through these fibers, make a wrap in front of the quill, and now I'm going to come up behind the quill again reach in there and grab it and hold it while I come over the top of the quill and now I'll make another wrap in front of it and with those two wraps over the top and two wraps in front I can go in here and just cut off the uh, quill stem in this technique you'd use this particular technique on the smaller flies normally on the larger flies just grabbing a bunch of uh, fibers and doing that distribution wrap is pretty easy but when you get to the smaller flies the the material you're working with the little fibers are so short that it's hard to do that distribution wrap so in lieu of it you use this whole feather wrap and you can get partridge feathers like I had right down to uh, you know very small size 16 18 and uh, it, it is a lot easier than the distribution wrap in those small sizes but having done that uh, if you'll forgive the mismatch now of the uh, partridge against the uh, tail of uh, mallard or dyed mallard, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and dub my head, and that's the the actual end of the fly. It's a relatively simple fly, ties up quickly, very effective. Now notice I, I wrap to the front, I wrap to the eye, and then wrap back, and that's how I build this up 
you know, to get my my head to be the size of the uh, the body where I finished wrapping. And if you don't wrap to the eye and then come back like this to build up the back end of the fly, you end up you if you try to build it all in the back right where the hackle ends, you end up with this big bunch back there, and it, and it often is not well packed. You need to start your dubbing back there by those legs go to the eye then go back to the legs and then back towards the eye and run out of dubbing and then do a whip finish like this and that's it you got yourself a finished fly this is what they call a bird's nest again tied by a gentleman named Cal Bird very popular on the west coast and gaining popularity all the time here on the east coast because it is such an effective fly and you can use it for uh, a surface emerger type imitation again if it's going to be a caddis imitation they do an antron tail for trailing shuck and uh, and or you can weight it and bounce it along the bottom but there you have it there's a bird's nest tied using rotary fly tying techniques